sprichst vom Abschied für kurze Zeit und bist schon morgen von mir so weit. Was sind schon Worte im Augenblick, was ein versprochenes Glück. Weil ich dich liebe, glaub ich an dich, doch willst das Schicksal, vergisst du mich, das darf nicht sein, tausendmal nein. Komm zurück, ich warte auf dich, denn du bist für mich all mein Glück. A couple of pics of a beautifully restored 1938 Opel Admiral, just to get into the right mood for this video. This car looks great even with a close top. Mein Geschick ist der Weg auch weit, führt er dich und auch mich in die Seligkeit. Darum bitte ich dich heut, komm zurück. Next on my list is a dashboard. You can see that there are many Artico elements. That was a normal thing to do back in the days, at least on upper class automobiles, but Opel used it to a great extent. I really like it and I wish I could afford to own the actual car. Wenn du mich küsst, dass du mich glücklich bist, den einen Menschen auf dieser Welt, der nur für dich lebt, der zu dir hält, hast du in mir. Drum sag ich. And here's what ICM made of it. The details are nice, but the, well, fit isn't. These two parts gave me a hard time until I was happy with the result. Perhaps happy isn't the right word. I couldn't do it any better, it's more precise, and I really thought of scratch building it. On the other hand, this group build has a deadline, so I decided to use what I had. I used my hobby knife to scrap the panel lines around the center of the dashboard. While I was dealing with the seam line, I overlooked that I had sanded off some knobs and switches. Very smart. Of course I had to rebuild them. For the radio switches I used sprue. Two knobs were made from tiny pieces of 0.4mm styrene sheet. As you can see, the radio switches have different sizes, so I'll do them again before I eventually start painting the dashboard. Let's start with the interior side of the firewall. Here you can see the radiator, and here's the actual one with open flaps. I was thinking of doing that with the kids' radiator. I don't know yet if I'll place one or two figures in the front seat, so I left it the way it is. Here you can see the door brake of the actual car. The kit's interior doesn't look much like that, so I had to add the panels and some, er, uh, steel. In order to do that, I removed some plastic that was in the way. I used 0.4mm styrene sheet to build the missing parts, and I decided to do it in layers. A little cutout for the brake was necessary, so I used my hobby knife to remove the plastic. For the actual panel, I needed the exact shape with the dashboard in place. First step was straightening some 0.6mm copper wire. Then the wire was heated in a flame to soften it. I used a large screwdriver with a white blade to bend it carefully along the firewall and the dashboard. That reduced the danger of sliding off the wire and damaging the styrene. A smaller screwdriver would have been more difficult to handle with my legendary sausage fingers. Here's the result. The silhouette was then used as a template and placed on a styrene sheet. I drew along the edge and then cut out the piece. And I even kept in mind to draw along the outer edge. It was one of my better days. After dry fitting I was happy with the result. I made a little cutout for the small piece of styrene that would have the slot for the door brake. It was time to make the same parts for the driver's side. And then I 
saw something on the panel I didn't notice before. I haven't figured out what it is yet, but I hope I will. At first I thought that it was meant to stow away maps and such, but according to the small handle they open upwards. So they must serve another purpose. Anyway, I tried to build them from scratch. The result could be better, but they won't be too much visible, so I decided to go with it. Now back to the passenger side. The door will be open so I needed a clean edge there. First thing to do was filling the upper bit to get a level surface. I did that with some scrap styrene pieces that I cut to length after the glue had cured. The complete edge was sanded down a bit to allow for a piece of 0.2mm styrene to be glued onto the edge. After curing, I cut off the axis and sanded everything smooth. to make room for the plate with a slot for the door break. A tiny piece of styrene was needed to fill the gap between the plate and the panel. It's barely visible, but I punched two circles into the plate, one above and one beneath the slot. These represent the bolts. On the actual part there are four bolts. I didn't have a matching tube to do that, so I only had the choice between not doing them at all or doing only two. The other side didn't need all that because everything will be hidden behind the closed door. There'll be wires and hoses to be made. As you can see, the car has two sun visors made from dark brown glass. And here's the one sun visor in the kit. Why only one? There are two attachment points on the windshield frame. I'm sure the Wehrmacht wouldn't have removed the right visor. The officer on that seat would have insisted on keeping it. My first thought was to cut the visor of the frame and replace it with clear plastic. I would have had to replicate the frame, but I found myself not capable to do that. Since the frame wasn't quite correct, I decided to build the complete visors. Ich könnte doch vieles nennen, worin verliebt ich bin. Doch ich bin jetzt ganz ehrlich und... We can keep this brief. I squeezed 0.6mm copper wire till it was really flat. Then I used a candle to heat it till it was red hot. After slowly cooling down, it was soft and easy to bend, but it was too wide to look any good. The attempt wasn't a complete failure, because I built two more hinges while working on the frames. Since I only need one of them, there's a spare part left. Am Ohr so klein, das kann ja nur ein neuer Sprössling sein, hab ins Herz gesch... My regular viewers will already have guessed it. My next attempt would show the use of my only present stiff aluminum foil. I bent a strip of that foil around the edge of a 0.5mm styrene sheet to shape it into a U-beam. And I could skip from here to the final attempt because the styrene was too thick. The clear plastic I wanted to use was a bit thinner than 0.2mm, so I should have known that it won't look right. 
On the other hand, this attempt was important because I tried to figure out how to bend the frame around the corners of the visor. I wasn't convinced with the results. As you can see, the frame's edges weren't straight and there were many indentations that couldn't be burnished out sufficiently. Attempt number three was quite similar. I couldn't think of a thinner but stable edge. What I tried to do here was to cut into the foil at the corners to make bending it easier. The one cent coin shows how small that visor actually is. Nonetheless, the indentations were there again. I glued a piece of stretched sprue to the frame to represent this part of the hinge. It was painted with a silver paint pen. I wanted to check out the pen for another use. The hinge was in the wrong position and I didn't like the frame anyway, so here's my... Do you know the feeling when all of a sudden you realize that you had part of the solution right in front of your eyes and didn't see it? I've got a large 0.2mm copper sheet and I didn't think of using it. It was so easy to bend the aluminum foil around the edge. And it was also very easy to cut it very close to the edge from both sides along my aluminum ruler. Here are a couple of pics of the U-beam. Next attempt of bending the aluminum foil around the corner. I thought it would be a good idea to cut off the resulting ridges. It was a silly idea because after that there wasn't much of the foil left and it just snapped off after taking it off the copper sheet. I had to accept that I had to go with those ridges which meant squeezing them until they were flat enough to almost disappear. The alternative would have been to make three parts for each frame and then trying to align them while placing them on the clear part. I didn't want to do that because there could have been deep scratches as a result. Here you can see how I bent the aluminum foil around the corner. I had to widen the slit to make bending it possible. This broken tip of a number 11 blade came in handy for the task. I carefully inserted the back of the blade into the slit and slightly rotated it from the left to the right. After that the slit was wide enough to continue with the tip of a toothpick. Now it wasn't too difficult to bend the foil around the corner. Since it has been bent into a U-shape before, it was simple to do it again. This mark is at 3mm from the top edge. I used this pair of silhouette scissors to cut the short side to the desired length. Same procedure for the second angle. This is not what I had hoped for, but after many hours and many attempts I was fed up with it. This was about to kill my mojo, so I decided to stop here and use that frame. Maybe I can hang a cap on that corner. And now for painting the clear parts. The plastic I used isn't styrene, so I wasn't sure if the acrylics would stick to it. I used sanding paper to roughen it up from one side. A coat of any kind of transparent paint would close the tiny scratches. This drop of alcohol proves the theory. I masked up four test areas and placed the clear colors I wanted to use on my bench. You remember, the result should be a dark brown. I didn't want to use red because I thought it would be too, well, red. My choice was orange instead. In order to make it a real dark brown, I also used smoke. Yellow wasn't of any use. Red was. The brown I achieved without red was too much on the green side. 
und machte Licht. I applied the clear dark brown to the test piece with a soft nylon paintbrush. The top left area was literally flooded with paint to get a quick impression. I really liked the color. It was as close to the actual color as it could possibly get. I wanted to airbrush the clear parts but the result on the top left bit after curing was really nice. It leveled while drying and there was enough material without any dust or bubbles I could use. I still don't really like the frames but the flaws are hardly visible for the naked eye. I used sprue for this part of the hinge again but placed it on top of the visors. The measurements show how small these parts actually are. The visor is clear enough to see my CA glue applicator from a distance of about 10 centimeters or 4 inches. That's good enough for me. Here the visors are waiting for the silver paint to cure.